Hi, my name is Tao Zhang, and I'm from William and Mary. In this video, I'll present our work named Exploring Branch Predictors for Constructing Transcend Execution Trojans. Around early 2018, multiple groups of researchers reported a series of CPU vulnerabilities named Spectre and Meltdown. Such vulnerabilities widely affect microprocessor security among different vendors via a new class of microarchitecture attacks called Transcend Execution Attacks. Among these attacks, Spectre Warren 2 is one of the most dangerous since it allows the attacker to execute arbitrary code in Transcend mode. By combining this attack with various microarchitectural cover channels, the attacker can trigger leakage of sensitive data such as encryption keys. Spectre-like attacks are hard to address since they are seeded in the fundamental of CPU branch predictors. In particular, Spectre Warden 2 leverage indirect branch mispredictions to activate malicious transcendent execution, allowing violating microarchitecture states. Here, we show how Spectre Warden 2 uses indirect branches for such attacks. Inside CPU, target of indirect branches are predicted using a structure called branch target buffer, or say BTB. BTB caches branch targets for later uses. In nearly all today's processor, BTB is shared. As a result, an attacker process executing on the same core can inject malicious interest in BTB by executing branches in his own address space. Next, when victim execute the branch, misprediction will mislead the speculative execution to this malicious address. Using this mechanism, the attacker can force victim to execute arbitrary code which could be used to leak data via microarchitectural cover channels. Spectral Warren 2 can apply to different attack scenarios. Using an attacker process, attacker could inject malicious branch target to attack a victim process. Or, an attacker can attack privileged space by injecting malicious target within his own process. In the same address space, a victim process can be also attacked with the malicious target injection within its own process as Trojan attack. Manufacturers provide different mitigations to address the most critical variation of these attacks. For instance, IBPB and SDIBP could prevent target injection between different processes, while IBRS, by default, restricted indirect branch speculation in privileged space. To us, there are still attack surface remain open. Even with all protections enabled, we believe such collisions are still possible. In particular, there are two cases. First, when a branch located in hyperprivileged software entities such as kernel writes into BTB, a branch in a lower privileged software entity could be affected by reading from the same BTB entry. Second, two branch instructions located within the same software entity could collide in BTB. This is possible due to address compression and other optimizations that takes place inside BTB. So now the question arises, how can an attacker leverage such collisions to violate security? The answer we propose is transcendent execution trojans. The goal of such a transcendent trojan is to appear as a benign leakage-free application. It can pass all kinds of static and dynamic checks as contains no malicious instructions anywhere in his code base. However, when the Trojan is triggered, it activates branch instruction collision, resulting in malicious code being executed in transcendent mode. As a result, user secret could be leaked due to the violation of microarchitecture state. Although branch prediction plays an important role to improve the performance of modern CPU, the design of CPU branch predictors are seldom revealed. So far, the uncovered information could be either basic or fragmented. In this work, we performed a reverse engineering study to discover branch prediction mechanisms for manipulating indirect branch predictions. As a result, we find new collision mechanism and anomalies that could be utilized in three different kind of transcendent execution Trojan attacks. Here is a basic text example. The first step is a branch instruction jumps to a target at address T1 to execute a few nodes. The execution carries on to an indirect branch, then jumps to a return and exit. This is what usually happens when no collisions in between the two branches. 
The performance counter monitoring the second branch execution will indicate no misprediction. We will also observe high latency when accessing a previously flushed data because it's never brought back. In a collision case, the first step remains the same with executing the same branch at the beginning. As usual, this will create an entry in BTB by storing a few bits from the branch's source address WB and a few target bits of T1. Branch collision in here means the next indirect branch at address RB having matching lookup information with the previous branch at WB. As a result, BPU will retrieve the same BTB entry using the previous target T1's lower 32 bits, concatenating with RB's higher bits as the prediction target. If this prediction target is equal to the address T3, speculative execution will happen at the data accessing gadget. Although this transcend execution will eventually be squashed, branch misprediction will happen and transcend execution could be finished, resulting in data being cached and could be accessed with low latency. Here, we refer the first branch at address WB, the writer branch, and the second branch at RB, the reader branch. The code segment at T3 is usually referred as transcend execution gadget. By altering this frame in different tests, we discover three different types of branch collision mechanism, or say anomalous. First, by experimenting with the above test, we uncover detailed prediction schemes that BPUs generally use, including different tag folding schemes exactly matching bits of indexes and offsets. For indirect branch prediction, Additional information such as previous branch execution history are also adopted in the BHB-based addressing mode. When using this mode, branch history state, or say BHB state, are also required to be the same for a collision. Previous attacks rely on indirect branches as the writer branch. To inject a malicious branch target, attackers need to execute a sequence of taken-non-taken -taken branches to maintain a desired BHB state. Such irregular code layout can be easily detected as malicious if it's in victim process as a Trojan attack. Since poisoning from another process is also fixed by the current mitigations, indirect writer branches are not useful in this scenario. On the other hand, we find target injection using direct branches or conditional branches are more ideal as they are prevalent in normal code, and the collision does not require BHP state when indirect branch prediction fall back to the general prediction mode. We will also demonstrate how to poisoning from a higher privileged entity in this kind of attack. Here, we show an abstract distant collision Trojan example. It starts inside of a benign user function, executing a system call which leads to a branch execution from the kernel space. Next, the execution continues and gets back to the user function and further reaches an uh, indirect jump. Due to the matching index, tag, and offset, this indirect branch collides with the previous branch. Consequently, branch predictor will reuse the previous branch's lower target bits with the current indirect branch's higher bits for prediction target. Since the attacker places the transcend gadget at the same place, the speculative execution will take place at this gadget, which caches user secrets. Although the execution will be squashed when the correct target is resolved from pipeline, the microarchitecture state could be already violated. The cache secret could be further leaked through a cover channel. In our evaluation, the attack can achieve high accuracy with an acceptable activation rate. The attack works well since kernel address space layout randomization has low entropy. If the writer branch is in user space such as libraries, with regular entropy of user asler, the attack may become less efficient. During our reverse engineering work, we also observed additional collision anomalies. In particular, multiple writer branches at a consecutive space can collide with a particular reader branch in a closed region. The figure shows that, in addition to the fully matching address, writer branch addresses that have different bit 5 and arbitrary lower bits could also collide with the same reader branch. We captured a more clear picture with scanning these anomalies among different chips. We find that on Skylake and Kaby Lake, 
if we dissect the virtual memory address into 64 byte segment. In each segment, the branches in the higher half are all writer branches that could inject branch targets to poison any branches in the other half. We find a similar but slightly different pattern in Haswell, where each pair of writer region and reader region forms a 32 byte segment instead of 64. By carefully examining related front-end component changes, we note that the tracking window of the decoded stream buffer, or say MIOP cache, has been enlarged from 32 bytes in Haswell to 64 bytes in Skylake and Kaby Lake. Thus, we think it's possible that such collisions are caused due to the unknown predictions built for quick responding inside of the DSB. For simplicity, we now refer this kind of collision anomalies as bit 5 collisions, or early front-end collisions. Here, we demonstrate how a transcend trojan could leverage such collision anomalies. We first execute function f2, which moves a non-secret value into a register and further transfer the execution to a gadget which outputs the non-secret value via leaving a trace in cache. Next, we execute function f1, which places a secret value into the same register. The followed indirect branch supposed to jump to a benign code and return, so only F1 have access to the secret. However, due to the previous branch is in a writer branch region, and the current indirect branch is in a corresponding reader region, the current indirect branch will have misprediction resulting in transcend execution jumping to the body of function F2, which contains the gadget that leaks the value stored in the same register. As a result, the gadget instruction will be executed in transcend mode with the register containing the secret value. Although the execution will be squashed while rolling back with the correct target, microarchitectural state might be already violated, causing leakage of secret through cover channel analysis. We evaluate this attack and find it has high accuracy. Since this type of trojan could have attack components in very close region, the attack is portable and resistant to Asler. Although we observe low activation rate with the original Trojan prototype, we managed to improve it with genetic programming approach, which we'll be introducing in the next slides. Recent proposed work tried to detect the malicious transcend execution gadgets, such as using abstract interpretation of binary code to find data dependencies and matching activities with non-malicious patterns. However, abstract code interpretation does not account for side effect of transcend control flow transitions due to the early front-end collisions. Thus, we could break the data dependency inside of the malicious gadget and only leave part of it in the transcend execution mode to bypass such detection. We verify this technique, and during our evaluation, we also observed an improvement of gadget performance since reducing transcend workload could also alleviate the front-end risk conditions. During test, we also noticed that a transcend execution could happen at a place right after an indirect branch. Although the situation is rare, we confirmed such skipping behavior on a selection of CPUs. With the public information such as manufacturer documentation and patents, we're able to link this observation with a static prediction mechanism for indirect branch prediction. In particular, if BPU does not have a prediction result, speculative execution will take on the indirect branches full through pass by default. We find this mechanism could enable a new transcend Trojan model, since it does not need a writer branch nor a branch collision. To demonstrate a skipping-based Trojan, we show a code example compiled with LLVM. In this example, there are two indirect calls with two function pointers, f1 and f2. The first function returns a secret value, while the second returns a non-secret. After these two function calls, a gadget code sequence reveals the value of non-secret, which is safe. On the right is the assembly of some key elements. When executing the first indirect call, a secret value returns to assign a local variable. When skipping happened to the second indirect call, transcend execution starts on its full-through pass. According to System 5 API, functions 
are required to return the value using the same register. At this stage, this register still obtains the secret as the second function is temporarily skipped. As a result, the secret value will be transmitted through the stack and further to the gadget that revealed this secret. Please note that this Trojan attack works only when skipping happens to the second call, which can be done by locating the function pointer f1 and f2 in different cache lines. In the evaluation, we find skipping-based Trojan could also achieve high accuracy. Since the transcend execution here is on the deterministic path and does not require a writer branch, this attack is also portable, or is a resistant to address space layout randomization. Since branch skipping is rare, the activation rate of the original prototype is low. In the next slides, we'll demonstrate how to improve this low activation rate with genetic programming approach. Some previous tests show low Trojan activation rates, especially for the portable Trojans. We also noticed that different surrounding code artifacts around the Trojan key components could either improve or affect the activation. This is due to the tight risk conditions within the CPU frontend components, which makes tuning Trojans a difficult and meticulous task. Here, we apply a genetic programming approach to automatically inject lightweight code artifacts for optimizations. In particular, we abstract Trojan prototypes with only the key component, then place the feature anchors that indicates the potential place and the types of the code artifact for injection. Besides this approach, we also create a brute force optimization that randomly inject artifacts at the same potential places. By comparing the performance between the optimized Trojans from these two approaches, we find that genetic approach can quickly find optimal instance with high activation rate. Here, we provide suggestions of countermeasures. To protect the existing systems, one can fully apply Ripplein to replace all indirect branches. While recompiling legacy applications could be troublesome, this mitigation could be still vulnerable to return address stack attacks. Serialization instructions such as Alphans could be still useful with a considerable performance overhead, which depends on the amount of deployment. We also list the hardware fixes to tackle each Trojan. For example, future branch predictors could store full addresses of the target in BTB to prevent distant Trojan and collision. Redesigning of the related front-end components could avoid bit 5 type of branch collision anomalies. Changing the default indirect branch static predictions could address branch skipping. However, changing branch predictors and the related front-end units could be costly in terms of performance and energy consumptions. Last but not least, it's also possible to adopt lightweight hardware solutions that target on preventing side channel exploits such as Invisis spec, STT, and so on. To conclude, we perform a reverse engineering study of branch predictors and uncover different branch collision mechanisms and anomalies. We demonstrated how these findings could be utilized as practical transcend Trojan attacks. We also propose techniques to improve both Trojan's stealthiness and Trojan's effectiveness. In this paper, we also analyze the existing binaries and demonstrate a high prevalence of natural occurring collisions, which can be used to hide malicious Trojans as well as constructing Trojans from existing code. Last but not least, we suggest approaches to defense against these threats. This work is reviewed and accepted by SBLOSS 2020. Here, we thank the reviewers for their valuable suggestions. And I also want to thank my co-authors, including Kenneth and my advisor, Dmitry Yevdushkin. This work is partially supported by Intel Corporation and the National Science Foundation. Thanks for watching.